Hey everybody, Henry W. Steele here. This video is, it's going to be a little bit quicker than the normal videos I've been doing in this series. And this is the seventh video in the series of videos I'm doing on chart reading. And the main topic of this video is going to be retracements, okay? Now this is United States dollar, Canadian dollar cross pair, four hour chart. And it's the same chart that I've been using through this whole series and will continue to use. Now, sorry I didn't get the video out yesterday, but I had a little bit of a problem with the internet. Nothing a new modem didn't fix. So I'm back up and running. Uh, today is December 6th, Thursday, December 6th, 2018. And we are going to be talking about retracements. Now, retracements... Last video we talked about price extensions. That's where you take a swing, measure it, and then project a certain percentage of that swing's price move into the future or into the naked part of the chart. And then that price level is, or that price extension level, of course, is used to anticipate resistance or support, depending upon whether or not you're moving up or down or whether you're moving up or down. Now, retracements are a little bit different. Obviously, the retracement is whenever the price moves in the opposite direction of the main trend. So if the main trend is up, like it is right here, a retracement would be where the price moves down against the main trend. And then, obviously, it would head back up in the direction of the main trend. But the difference with retracements versus price extensions is that retracements can be a lot harder to pin down. In other words, there's not just one or two percentage levels to look at. Um, a swing might retrace 50%, 70%, 100%, more than 100%. And traditionally in price analysis, the more the retracement of the previous swing is, the more likely the um, main trend is to weaken and or change. Um, but in the Forex market especially, that's not necessarily true. For instance, this swing right here, the price retraced more than 100% of that swing you can see right there. But the main trend continued up to the upside. And we can see that this was the big bottom of this main trend in hindsight. Now if we use this swing right here, from this low to this high up here, this retracement is only about 50%, so that would be um, classically analyzed a normal retracement and we could expect the main trend to continue but um, if we look if we scroll back here we see that the trend was down and we see even though this is the big bottom that we can see clearly in hindsight while the market's trending down we don't know that this is the big bottom right here we just see the market move up it makes a lower high like it had been and then it makes a higher low and then a higher high. So we go, wait a minute, maybe the trend's changing. But then we get a lower low again. So we're like, oh, well, the trend's still continuing. And as we're looking at this, the trend is down. So our retracements are to the upside and not the downside. I hope that makes sense. So until the trend is definitely changed and it's clearly in a different direction, you don't know if your retracements are actually retracements. You know what I mean? I mean, while the trend is down like this, all the retracements go up. So while we're actually at the very beginning of the uptrend at this low right here, we don't know that until we're somewhere around here in price when the price levels have finally broken above this significant high right here of the downtrend and we've had numerous higher lows and higher highs. So it becomes clear that we're in an uptrend. So while we're here, we still see retracements as moving up, but in reality, the retracements are moving down because that's the beginning of the new uptrend. See what I mean? So retracements are kind of, what's the word? Kind of hinky. Um, so, Long story short, I don't use retracements, percentage levels on retracements. I don't care about that. I don't care how much the market has retraced. I don't even care if it's a genuine retracement or not, or if the trend, uh, trend has changed. 
I actually use retracements in conjunction with um, trend lines and trend lines I'm going to talk about in the next video. I use them together to forecast specific points in price and time that I expect the market to be at. And when you do it properly, um, it's very accurate. So I'll, I will, I'm not going to talk about the forecasting method exactly in the next video. I'm just going to be talking about trend lines, but I will get to that in the near future. And when I do get to that, you will definitely want to see that video because it is going to be, um, I don't know, we can call it the keys to the kingdom. Because once you know how to do that, it's, it, it makes very accurate forecasts once you know the proper ratios to use and things of that nature, which I'll talk about in the future. But my point of bringing that up is I don't use the retracements in the classical method. I use the retracements and the trend lines together. When I get a failed forecast price level, that's when I know the trend has changed. And I will talk about that and cover that in the future video. So um, the main idea you can get out of this is as far as I'm concerned, I really don't care what the retracements do in the big picture and that's true and not true but as far as the normal considerations of retracements or the normal analyzation I should say of the retracements I don't really care now using them with the trend lines and um, a couple other things that we'll talk about in the future I do care about that and you'll see what I mean when I talk about that so as far as retracements go right now that's all that I'm have to, I have to talk about. But I do want to cover one last thing. I was asked in the comment section on a couple of videos what I meant by um, more than half of the momentum. So I'm going to answer that really quickly. In the previous video where I talked about momentum, I talked about increases in momentum and how you can use where the previous high or low price areas or price area rejection versus the momentum can be used to determine whether or not we can expect the trend to continue or not continue. And what I mean by more than half the momentum is just this. When you have an increase in momentum, and we had three candles increase right here, you can measure that just like this. And anything past, since this is a bull move or a um, move to the upside, Anything past the 50% point is more than half of the momentum. So hopefully that clears that up. Like we have the price level right here. The highest close was right here. And the highest actual reached price was right there. So that creates our price rejection zone for this particular swing. And that happens to be more than uh, halfway through this particular move. So that indicates a specific thing. If you want to know more about it, look for the momentum video in this series, and I'll explain more in there. So hopefully that clears that up for the individual who was asking about that. That's all I meant is more than halfway of the swing that was an increase in momentum. Um, obviously, you don't know if the swing is complete until the moment momentum stops and you get a sideways market or a retracement. But once that happens, then you can measure it and determine, uh, make your determinations from there. So hopefully that wasn't too convoluted an answer. But stay tuned because the next video I'm going to be doing tomorrow on the 7th, Friday, is going to be talking a bit about trend lines and how, I'm, how I use them, or I should say how I set them up on the chart. And then after that, on the 9th um, video in the series, I'm going to give you the so-called keys to the kingdom where we can start to make very accurate price and time forecasts together, meaning we forecast a point in time and price that the market moves to very, very frequently. So until tomorrow, this is Henry Steele. I'll talk to you later.